We're covering Labib's barcode creation tool and a few scenarios that go along with that, like printing barcode labels for all items in a collection, printing barcode labels for individual items and newly added items, printing barcode labels for a custom queue of items, and how to print patron library cards. There's a lot to cover, so we're going to move quickly. I've already created a collection called My Books, and I have over 100 items in here. And it's time for me to print my barcode labels. I'm going to start by clicking on barcodes in the left sidebar, and this will bring up the barcode creation tool. I've got a few options here. Item barcodes is selected by default. Your other option is patron barcodes. This first example, I'm going to stick with item barcodes, so we're going to keep that selected. Next, it wants us to choose our collections. If I click all, it would add all of my collections. That would print barcode labels for every single item in every single collection. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna do one collection called my book. So I've added it to the list here. You can continue to add more collections if needed. Next, you can choose your sorting. You can sort by title, which is default, creator or copy added updated. Copy added updated is actually really useful for when you want to sort by items that were just added to your collection. Next, you can filter by a specific date range. This is also helpful. Say you've just added several items to your collection and you want to just print barcodes for those items, you could choose to filter for all items added today or maybe they were added this week. For now, we're going to leave this at lifetime. Now we're ready to select our label template. 5160 by Avery is the default template. It's just very widely supported and widely available, which is why we have that selected. As you can see though, we have a large list of Avery templates available, including some Demco templates. Um, some of our Avery templates are letter and some are A4 size based, so there should be something for everyone here. We get a question all the time, do we support spine labels? And we do not support spine labels. Instead, we support the Avery 5167, which is a very small label that fits on most spines. Um, if you need true spine labels, we'll have other videos on those that will show you how to export your barcode data and use a third-party tool. I'm gonna go back to the 5160 to start out. We feel like it's a really good size, it's mailing address size, and it fits on the back of both most books really well easily readable, and it holds three lines of information about your item. So now that we've selected our, our label template, we can put the information we want on here. You can, you can leave a line blank. You can use title, creators, call number, organization, the Dewey Decimal Classification, or your LCC. Uh, I'm going to actually leave these default except for call number. I'm going to change that to DVC because I don't have any call number information on my items. When you're ready, click Generate QR, a new tab will open, and it'll generate your labels for all of your items. So here you can see we've got our title, we've got our author, we've got our DDC information. It includes some other information like our custom barcode ID for that specific copy and the scannable QR code. On the left here, we've got some information. At the top, there's a warning. Always make sure fit to page is unselected in your printer settings. It is very important that there is no scaling happening or this may not print properly. Some printers call this fit to page, some call it scaling, some printers have both options. You wanna make sure that those are, are disabled or if it's scaling, it's set to 100% and that it's not actually changing the size of this at all. Next, if you have minor alignment issues, you can adjust this up or down, left or right in millimeters. Just enter the number of millimeters you wanna move it Negative will move it left, positive will move it right. Uh, in the other margin, you can move it, um, I'm sorry, this one's top and bottom and this one's left and right. So you have a little bit of play there if you need to move your, your document around a little bit. Next, we have our print details. It shows that we're using the 5160 label, that we have a total of five pages, and that there's a total of 122 labels. What you'll notice though, that if we scroll through this, we've actually only got three pages and 90, 90 labels visible. Well, here at the bottom, you can see we've broken this into two different sets. So set one is pulled up right now, and you wanna start with that. So you click print labels, it brings up the print dialog. You can see we have three pages here. You can make adjustments like black or white, remove any scaling. If you wanted to print a specific page, like just page one or just page three, which can actually come in handy for a lot of different reasons, you can make that change here. Once you're ready, you click print, it'll print those out. Then you want to move on to set two, which will load in your second set. You can see this is a much smaller set. I'll follow the same steps. You click print labels, click print, 
And then you're done. You can label all your items and put them back on the shelves and you're ready to go. You're ready to start lending. If you had a lot more items, there could be a lot more sets here. That's how that works. Now, let's say there's an example where someone damaged a barcode label, maybe it got wet and it's no longer readable and you need to replace just that one. You're not gonna wanna print every single item in your collection, so you're gonna wanna filter your results. The first thing that you wanna do is make sure that that item is, print, is pushed to the top of the print queue so that it's ready to be printed first in line. To do that, you'd select it. You can search for it or click on it. You wanna expand it to see its details. At the bottom here, you'll see there's a copies option. Make sure that this is the actual barcode ID that you're wanting to update. And then once you confirm, click on this floppy disk icon. And this will basically update the copy, pushing it to the top of the print queue. You don't need to actually make any changes. Clicking it is all you have to do. So now we'll go back to barcodes. We're gonna select our collection still. Now I'm gonna actually filter by today's date. And I'm gonna change this to DDC and I'm gonna generate it again. And there's our single item. We print that off, we replace our damaged one and we're good to go. Now let's say that we wanted to add an item to this too. Adding the item will work exactly the same. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna select this item instead. I'm gonna go to copies. I'm gonna just add a new copy and I'm gonna repeat the steps. Barcode, my books, and I'm gonna sort this actually by copy added updated and I'm gonna do today's date. And generate. So now we have these two. We print those off, we would add the one for our new book and then we could replace our damaged book. Now let's say we just want like a custom queue. These are like totally random items. Maybe some were added today, some were added a long time ago, one is damaged and you just need to create a custom list. Well, that's possible too. We're gonna to close this out, go back to our library. The first thing you need to do is add a new collection. You can name it whatever you want. Name it barcodes, name it print. I actually have one I've created already and I call mine Make and Labels and it's totally empty, there's nothing in it. So I'm gonna stay in my books collection here for a second. I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna find the items that I need to print. So I'm gonna select this item, Oh, I'm gonna select this item and this item and this item. And then you can even like search for an item and it'll keep them in the queue. I'm using batch edit here. If you're not familiar, this is batch edit to select items. At the bottom, you can see I'm batch processing five total items and I wanna move those into my make and labels collection. It's gonna take a few seconds and I'll move my items. An important thing to note if you're using this specific method, batch edit will not move items that have an active hold or an active checkout. So you would need to make sure to release your hold or check your item back in if you need to move an item using batch edit. Next, we'll go, we'll go ahead and look in our make and labels collection just to make sure that worked. Now we've moved these items here. We'll click on barcodes. And now we'll just choose our Make and Labels collection. And I'm just gonna leave all the settings default. I'm gonna click Generate. And there we go. There's our items ready to print. That's a custom queue that we've created. Well, now you realize that, well, we've moved these items out. We've gotta move them back to our collection. That's easy to do. So we would be done printing this. We close it out. We'll go back to our library. We'll select the first item in the list. We'll choose the Select Collection button, which will select all items in the collection. We'll click move and we'll choose my books. And it'll move them all back. It just takes a few seconds. So within just a matter of a couple minutes, we created a totally custom queue. We were able to print out the labels for those items, move everything back and we're back in business. So we'll go back to the my books collection and there's Batman, here's, here's uh, Asterios Polyp. It's all ready to go. So now that we've done that, we're gonna cover one more thing. We're gonna do what if you wanna print patron library cards? That's a slightly different process. So we'll go back to barcodes, and this time we'll choose patron barcodes. And you'll see the options change a little bit. I've only got a couple of patrons. I've set them up just for this example. And, but you could filter by when they were added if you wanted to. I'm just gonna do lifetime. And for the label template, we actually recommend the Avery 8371. I'm just gonna search that. 
And that is business card size, and they're perforated. So you can print these out, you pop them out. If you wanted to run them through a laminator, you could to make them more durable. Um, but they hold a lot of information. You can do blank, name, organization, patron ID, uh, zip code, or created. And I'm just going to leave them all enabled, and I'm going to generate these. And here we go. We have a couple library cards, and these would be perfectly sized to pop out. It's got all their information on there. And... That's it, that's created patron library cards. Now they could bring those in, you could scan those when you're lending an item out to them. This scan will work when using the kiosk system and it'll even work um, you know, basically any time the patron needs to scan a library card. So that is how we use the barcode tool. We'll have some other tutorials on how to use third-party tools and then we'll have finally have a tutorial on overriding custom barcodes in a, another tutorial.